In this problem, our goal is to find the capacitance between a uh, spherical shell that we have here uh, that is concentric with a cylinder that we have inside here with a corresponding radii of A for the smaller one and B for the larger one. And it doesn't exactly say in the problem, but uh, what we're going to do is go ahead and just smear a, uh, a charge uh, Q on the cylinder, resulting in a negative charge Q here, and then um, uh, find out what the capacitance is between those two. And again, a capacitance is just a made-up term that we just defined. That's what those three little lines here mean. Uh, the capacitance capacitance is just defined as the ratio of the charge to the um, the voltage between those two. So. Uh, the first thing that we need to do, obviously we have the charge, I just said it, but we need to find the voltage. And uh, the easiest way right now to find the voltage is just to do a Gauss's law where we put a Gaussian surface uh, between these two right here. And then um, go ahead and find the electric field. And from the electric field that we find jutting out from the cylinder, we can go ahead and uh, um, take the integral of that and then find the voltage and then compute the ratio. So the first step that we're going to go ahead and do is just do that Gaussian surface that I just drew before. I'll just go ahead and redraw Gauss's law over here. So it's the closed integral of that um, Gaussian surface. And we'll just go ahead and say that this, this is a length A over here and just go ahead and putting it back over here. Um, uh, Gaussian surface, or that Gauss's law is the Q enclosed and uh, epsilon naught. And as I said before, Q enclosed is just some Q that I just arbitrarily smeared across um, this cylinder over here. So we can go ahead and uh, input that over here. And then if we look back over here, our Gaussian surface here is gonna be, um, it's gonna have some radii uh, R, right? but it's gonna have a length L. It's gonna completely encapsulate everything that we have over here. So we can go ahead and make that substitution. And since the normal vector of that um, Gaussian surface is also normal to the electric field that jets off from that cylinder, uh, we'll go ahead and just turn this dot product into a uh, multiplication here. So we have just the magnitude of the electric field times the uh, the surface, that Gaussian surface, which is uh, 2 pi RL, and that's equal to just regular Q, because that's the Q that was enclosed over epsilon naught. And then we'll just go ahead and solve for that electric field. Epsilon naught there. And uh, we can just go ahead and just turn this whole thing into um, an R hat because just like I had uh, mentioned previously is that um, that is actually just um, I'm putting in the R hat direction. So we can just go over free to add that R hat back onto the end there. Okay, now we can go ahead and use this electric field to find the potential, electrical potential. And so let's go ahead and make some room actually right here. I'm gonna go ahead and scoot these all up. Continuing down right here to find the potential. So finding the finding the potential, so we have a little different section right here. So the potential is just defined as, let's say, Vb minus Va equals um, the negative in spatial integral from one point, so point uh, A to B, of the electric field dotted with our path that we choose and we'll just go ahead and just take the path straight in um, from here down here or I guess looking over here just from here to here is just a direct path here and so that's going to be equal to go ahead and just input our value that we got for our electric field q r hat 2 pi r l epsilon naught dotted with um, our DL, which is uh, just a DR, D hat, exactly like what we used before in our uh, previous uh, potential problems that we had. Let's go ahead and start moving um, this round. We'll pull out all the constants. So as you can see, these constants are just two pi R, the or sorry, two pi two pi L. The R stays in epsilon naught. 
and then um, we have an R hat over uh, R dotted with a DR R hat. Since the uh, R hat are in the same directions, that just turns into the integral of 1 over R DR right here. Oh, I forgot the limits of integration, so. And of course, uh, the integral of 1 over uh, R is just a natural log of R. So let's actually go ahead and put that right here. So now we have Q over pi L epsilon naught. Mm -hmm. So uh, natural log, let's put it in parentheses here. Natural log of R evaluated from B to A right there. Of course, we can redo that one as um, negative blob of constants, pi L epsilon naught, natural log of uh, B divided by A. There we go. So that is um, uh, what we got for our uh, potential right here. And I just want to point something out right in here. So we have a negative potential, right? And remember, the negative potential is defined as the difference between B to A. Now, if we look over here, what potential actually means is what it's the potential uh, um, energy that we'd have to put in to take some sort of charge and bring it from infinity all the way either to this point, so point B, or from infinity all the way to this point, point A. As you can see, for the point A one, we have to move a longer distance than the one for um, uh, the point B. So that means that we'll have to put more energy in to move a charge from infinity to A than we do have to put from a charge from infinity to B. So the potential for A should be larger and the potential for B, and if that's the case, this is a negative number right here. And the way that corrects it over here is uh, if you take a natural log of uh, something that's less than 1, this whole thing becomes, the, the product of the natural log ends up becoming, po um, sorry, the product of the natural log becomes negative, and then this whole thing becomes positive right here. So you should, um, and that's going to matter whenever we put this into uh, the capacitance, because uh, capacitance, by definition, just something we defined as, should always be positive. And then uh, we always want to be able to have a positive potential. So that's a kind of a self-correcting term that you see here with the uh, potentials. Uh, anyways, so moving on and just uh, putting in our potential into this capacitance problem right here. Let's go ahead and just make a, a section here. Let's go ahead and solve for the... Oops. So for the capacitance. So we're just inputting it into this definition here. Is it equal to Q over V, right? We already figured out where Q was. That is equal to Q over V, or V is what we had at the bottom. And so we'll have a negative. Uh, so in our case, we can just take the um, uh, take this and throw it in there, knowing that it's going to be self-correcting, even though the, the function for capacitance is going to have a, a negative sign in it. It'll always be positive in terms of the system that we drew, that we described here. Okay, so we have Q over 2 pi uh, L epsilon naught, natural log of B over A. Things, Some things cancel, we'll, we'll flip that. Make it a little bit more uh, elegant, so 2 pi L epsilon naught. And uh, we are actually evaluating, whoops, there we go, L epsilon naught. And then um, we're just going to go ahead and evaluate it for a natural log of B over A. And uh, that's it. That is our capacitance that we have here. And uh, yeah, it works out pretty nicely. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it doesn't really get more complicated than that. The biggest crux was understanding um, this little nuance thing with the negatives right here.